this is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Lou DeBella for DeBella's Digest. And I should just say before we crack on that as we're uh, recording this, the Euros quarterfinal between Italy and Belgium is going on. I've interrupted it to speak to Lou. Lou's still watching it half or half watching it in the background with his uh, the, the country of his heritage going for their place in the semis. But Lou, how has your week been up until now, which is probably very stressful? It's been an interesting week. Um, it looks like boxing will officially return with an audience to New York for the first time on August 3rd at the theater at Madison Square Garden. Got announced yesterday. Triller Fight Club is doing it, um, you know, with a versus hip hop sort of battle between uh, rap stars Noriega and, and uh, Beanie Siegel. And, um, and there'll be a, a full fight card and, and I'll be the local promoter. So it's sort of cool that I will be working on the first, um, you know, ticketed audience boxing show in New York since the pandemic. So I'm happy about that. So it was, uh, it's, you know, I'm not going to complain about the week. It's been an okay week. What's on the agenda for today, <laughs> Daddy? What are we talking about? Well, someone else who seemed very happy this week, apparently because he can now lift 310 pounds on a bench press, is Deontay Wilder. I don't know if you've seen that uh, video circulating on social media. It, it caused a bit of a debate, as you can imagine. I mean, look, it, that's probably the most he's ever put up. Um, and he's obviously getting himself into some shape and, and conditioning himself physically to be strong for this fight. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to get on him for the video. I, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I wouldn't say that I'm going to, believe me, I'm not a weightlifter and I'm not going to purport to be an expert on lifting weights, but I do have friends of mine that I grew up with who are diseased weightlifters. And a few of them tell me that, um, that his, um, that his technical uh, prowess cool. uh, on the bench was might've been lacking a bit. Um, you know, but I, I don't think he's a natural weightlifter either. So I think that for him, I think that was more of an achievement in his own sort of realm. You know, um, it, it didn't look like perfect form to me, but, you know, maybe it doesn't need to. He didn't get hurt and he's certainly confident in his strength, which I think his strength is his best hope. Right. Is that kind of the thing not out boxing? You know this and I, it's not out boxing Tyson Fury. It's not. He's either knocking him out or beating him up, but he no like virtually impossible to see him outboxing him. So physical strength is probably an important component for him. How much of this kind of weightlifting and this switching and how he trains is about physically improving, and how much of it is about boosting his mindset and his confidence? I think if he's going to win, even by knockout, if he's going to, if the puncher's chance is going to come through, his head has to be in the right place. Yeah. Right. So if part of this stuff that looks weird is an effort by Malik and the people around him to get his head into the right space, it's probably smart. You know, though, though you can get hurt lifting a lot of weight with bad form. <laughs> that being said, I think getting your head right, if you're a Dante Wilder, is usually important right now. What did you make of his behavior at the launch press conference where Malik did pretty much all the talking? He sat there with his uh, headphones on, didn't really want to engage. Smart move, do you think? I mean, it's not something I like, but, but you know, I, look, his career is on the line. He knows it. I mean, if he gets smoked again, smoked by Fury, where does he go? I mean, he, he's, you know, he's no longer... Uh, among the the elite at the heavyweight division. So whatever, honestly, whatever he wants to do right now to carry him into the fight with the greatest confidence and, and personal peace is probably what he should be doing. Now, that being said, you know, you get paid on promoting a fight. You get paid partially on the performance of a pay-per-view. I mean, they got a pretty good undercard. You and I agreed on that recently. Yeah, very good. You know, there's good heavyweight fights on the undercard, but people want to see a good fight. And, and for it to be a good fight, his head's got to be in the right place and he's got to be better than he was in his last fight. I, I, I personally don't see the advantage of leaving your headphones in your ear and making believe you're not present because what, what's the sense of sitting on that dais? But again, 
you know, it's all about him, his own head and how he's, you know, where he, when he, he looks across the ring and sees Tyson Fury that night, is he prepared for that moment? And maybe they know better than we do as to what's going to prepare him for that moment. Is there anything else you would have liked to have seen him do or change since the second fight to give him the best possible chance in the third, for example? You know, it, 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 fights or? you got to believe me when I really say this, and I think you know I'm telling the truth. I don't root against him. Like, we had a nice run together. I mean, I sort of got thrown to the curb unceremoniously in a way that I thought was very unfair because I think I tried to do what was right for the guy. Cool. Um, but I got no hatred for him at all. Like, I'm not rooting against him. So, But I don't really care. I'm not getting paid. But it's not my business. So I'm not hyper judging the decisions they're making or how he's approaching anything, how he acts at a press conference, his comments. I mean, I was on the record when when he attacked uh, Mark the way he did, because Mark's also a friend of mine, Breland. And I, and I think Mark did the responsible, correct thing the night of that fight. He was in danger of seriously being hurt. And that fight was stopped exactly when it needed to be stopped. And, and I don't care if they don't like the fact I'm saying that. But I'm not going to get on his case about any of this other stuff. I, I, I will always have a, a warm spot for Deontay for having brought me into his picture and, and his career when I was brought in. And I had a nice run with him for a period of time. Do you think a couple of interim fights may have stood him in better stead, built his confidence back up? Yeah, I think fighting in between would have been helpful to him. But you know what? Things happened. I mean, he had a rematch clause. And by the way, it was that clause that got him the rematch sure. who knows that what would, you know, once other things start happening, your, your contractual right, the likelihood of getting it is diminished. So I, it, it may not really have been an option. He, he called in this rematch clause that he had this third fight clause that he had as part of the fury deal. So I'm not going to criticize that because it may not have been an alternative. You know, the other thing too is wilder against the total stooge, what does that really do? I mean, he's been around long enough. Knocking out another guy who doesn't belong in the ring with him, is that really going to do much for him? Sure. And, and I, I don't know the answer to that. And, and if you fought a guy like an Andy Ruiz, who knows if you ever get to the third Fury fight? Yeah. You know, I mean, that... So I'm not going to second-guess their decision-making. Now, we know he needs to win by a knockout or stoppage if he's going to come out on top. If you were advising him strategically, is it better to jump on Tyson Fury from the start and just really put pressure on? Or is it better to bide your time, set your shots up and wait for that big opportunity to emerge? You need to box a whole lot better than you box. But look, he's not a great boxer. He's not Tyson Fury as a boxer, but he is nowhere near as bad as he looked in the last fight. He's not. And I worked with him enough to know that. And, and frankly, he boxed much better in Fury and Wilder Fury 1 than he did in, in Wilder Fury 2, mm. right? I think we agree on that. Oh, yeah. he, needs to, he needs to show that he can pop a jab, he can box with Fury, and then if he sees an opening, he needs to take it. He needs to, be, he needs to back Fury up some. He needs to get Fury's respect again, you know? And maybe Fury is a little bit like you know complacent sitting at the top of the mountain but but in order to prove that he needs to back him up and assert himself a little bit but he also needs not to fight stupidly and he needs to pop a jab do some fundamental stuff and box a little bit he's always going if, if he can keep the fight close the puncher's advantage swings more toward him a little bit if it starts being a dominant outboxing and you see that Fury is actually hurting him, then that's not, that's not a recipe for success for Deontay Wilder. And it's not the kind of scenario that's going to allow that puncher's chance to come to fruition. You said earlier uh, his career is on the line. Do you think if he experiences a similar manner of defeat to the last time, he'd hang up the gloves? Or do you just mean his, his career is finished at top level? I don't know that he would hang up the gloves or not, but I do think his career would be, you know, you never say never that a guy can't have a resurgence or win another fight you don't expect him to. But if he gets smashed by Fury the way he got smashed in the last fight, or if he literally gets counted out, um, 
he's going to have to do some self-evaluation because I don't know that he's then going to want to fight for the kind of money and opportunities that will be available to him. Look, if it's a great fight and he loses, he's still a factor, right? But if it's, if it's like the second fight, if it's like the first fight, it probably doesn't hurt him very much, if, all, if at all. If it's like the second fight, um, it's a big problem. How much of a factor is it in the success of U.S. boxing as a whole to have an American heavyweight competing at the top end of the division? It's very, very important. Um, it's very, very important. Uh, and, and I think hopefully there are guys like Stefan Shaw, Michael Hunter. There are some other guys on the horizon that can fight at the highest level. Can they win at the highest level? That remains to be seen. But there are some guys that could fight at the highest level. Uh, I mean, there are some prospects like Jermaine Franklin, Cassius Cheney. I mean, I heard rumors that Jermaine Franklin might get Dillian White. I yeah, don't know. But if that happened, I, I would favor Dillian. But if, if Jermaine Franklin could pull off that kind of an upset, then he, he moves into that realm. So I think there are other Americans behind Wilder, but there's certainly nobody right now at the level of Wilder, maybe the closest guy being Andy Ruiz. Okay. Well, Lou, I'm going to let you get back to the game. As we know, it's a thriller. Um, hopefully when this goes out, I think he'll go out on Sunday. You guys will be in the semis and, and so will England. And by, by the way, I also, I like the kid top rank has. I'm going to mention him too. As an American, I, I think I, I think he's a ways away. But I think Jared Anderson has good tools. I, I'm impressed by what I mean. It's very early. It's not ready for the big boys yet. But I'm impressed with what I've seen from him. Well, we'll find out a lot more about him, of course, on the, the Fury Wilder undercard. So. Agreed. Good stuff. Lou? I'm going to go back to... <laughs> ooh, 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 hold on. Tearing out okay, what's we're... left of your hair. <laughs> watching yes, my, 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 my few remaining hairs are in jeopardy right now watching this. <laughs> All right, but I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to my football. Uh, and um, viva l'Italia. And we'll hopefully see, we, we'll we see you in the finals. Off. I'm hoping. I'm hoping <laughs> we see each other in the finals. Bye-bye. Take care, Lou.